Good morning, everyone. This is April. I'm coming to you bringing the Sunday School lesson this for today. And um, in our Sunday School books, we just finished the sessions on irrefutable prophecies that point us to Jesus. You remember how we were going back in the Old Testament to the Old Testament prophets and we would how they would point us to Jesus. And we just finished that session, the last session last Sunday. So they've got this one little great little lesson squeezed in before we start the next series of lessons. It's called Seeking Justice in an Unjust World. So our point to our lesson this morning is join God in pursuing justice in the face of indifference and oppression. And I was thinking about this, this lesson and how it's so easy for us to turn this into a discussion on race and sometimes that can that can get kind of heated so we are going to try to uh, be open-minded and and think about other kinds of indifference and oppression um, and 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 we're going to talk about that it's going to become real clear to you how how it's not just a race issue it's not just uh, you know that type of discussion so we are going to be going to the book of Obadiah we're going to be looking at verse the well the whole book actually because it's only one chapter so um, Obadiah was a prophet that tried to warn um, the Edomites about their how they were behaving so here's a little background on who the Edomites were. So back in the Old Testament, um, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And these two brothers fought in the womb, Genesis 25 tells us, and, and Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for a, a bowl of soup. And then Jacob stole Esau's blessing in, in Genesis 27. And, and these two guys had just been feuding their whole lives. So, um, Edom, the, the descendants of Esau are the Edomites, and the descendants of Jacob is Judah, or Israel. Um, Edom refused to let Israel pass through the land in Numbers 20. I mean, they've just been in constant conflict. So, we're going to be talking about what Obadiah is telling the Edomites, and we're going to take those words to heart. So let's read verses 1 through 4. It says, This is what the Lord God has said about Edom. We have heard a message from the Lord. An envoy has been sent among the nations. Rise up and let's go to war against her. Look, I will make you insignificant among the nations. You will be deeply despised. Your arrogant heart has deceived you. You who live in clefts of the rock in your home on the heights, who say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? Though you seem to soar like an eagle and make your nest among the stars, even from there I will bring you down. This is the Lord's declaration. Okay, so here we have um, Obadiah and he's talking to the Edomites and, and they're basically saying, um, this is this was written about the time that Israel was attacked by the Babylonians. So remember, Israel wasn't doing what God wanted them to do, and God had prepared for them to to become under attack and taken into exile to Babylon. So this was this was the same time. All of this is happening at the same time. Okay, so the Edomites are their neighboring country to the south. And so the Edomites see that the Babylon is coming to Jerusalem and he's taken, attacking Israel. And they in, encourage this. They encourage Israel to be attacked by Babylonians. Um, now, remember, back in Genesis 12, we just talked about this a few weeks ago. Genesis 12, verse 3, remember, God told Abraham... I will bless those who bless you, and those who curse you, I will curse. 
So here we see we we see Edom and they are going to be cursed because of their sinful pride. Now, the nation of Edom lived in, on the top of Mount Seir, which was considered invincible. It was very rocky and it had deep um, deep cliffs and the rocks you could hide real easily. And it was just very hard to attack them on top of Mount Seir. And they became very arrogant. Like they begin to think nothing could ever happen to us because we we live up here in this fortress and they were very prideful and pride causes spiritual blindness. So, so it, the word says that um, they even asked who can bring me down to the ground. I mean, they were just, they were kind of like just, saying that they were beyond God's reach, that they that even God couldn't touch them. Um, so whenever we have this, this sinful pride in our lives, these are some, some of the things that we do. We start devaluing others. We don't think others have any value or that we are better than they are. Um, and we devalue, devalue others based on, on gender, on race, on their economic status, or their appearance. Um, you see, we we are to see everyone is made in the image of God. God made everyone for a purpose and gave them special gifts, and and we are to see each other as God's perfect creation, not that we are any better than anybody else. Um, we are also to be peacemakers and seek justice in His name not be like the Edomites who were, you know, egging the Babylonians on to attack Israel. So in the next set of scriptures, 10 through 14, let's see what they say. You will be covered with shame and destroyed forever because of violence done to your brother Jacob. On the day you stood aloof, on the day strangers captured his wealth, while foreigners entered his city gate and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were just like one of them. Do not gloat over your brother in the day of his calamity. <clears throat> Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction. Do not boastfully mock in the day of distress. Do not enter my people's gates in the day of their disaster. Yes, you. Do not gloat over their misery in the day of their disaster. And do not appropriate their possessions in the day of their disaster. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off their fugitives and do not hand over their survivors in the day of distress. Okay, so here we have, um, <laughs> we have Babylon has gone in and, and destroyed Jerusalem and taken the Israelites in exile and, and the Lord says, to the Edomites that you will be covered with shame and destroyed forever because of the violence you did to your brother Jacob. So while while the Babylonians were attacking Israel, the Edomites just sat there and watched. And and they just they just watched their brother and his descendants be killed and be taken away. They watched as Babylon destroyed the temple. And sometimes, you know, we can we can see things like that whenever it happens. And, and we, um, it's what we call a, a sin of omission. It's failure to do something one can and one ought to do. Um, Sometimes we can look at an injustice as it's happening and say, well, that, that's none of my business. So it's not my place to go over there and say anything or do anything. But that that is a sin of omission. The Lord wants us to be peacemakers and to keep each other in check and to be loving towards each other and to be helpful. Um, now, the Lord goes on in this scripture and he gives us several <clears throat> do nots 
to do. Um, he says, do not gloat over hardship. Do not enter the gate on the day of disaster. Do not take the possessions and do not kill or capture the survivors. Now, <laughs> we've all been in situations where we see something happen to somebody and we think to ourselves and we probably sometimes say it out loud. Well, he deserves that because of the way he acted in, in the past. That is so wrong. We cannot, we cannot go around saying and that we think they deserve anything. We are not their judge. Um, we cannot see somebody's hardship or their trial and, and think they deserve it and think that, or, or be boastful about it. I mean, that, that is just, that is just terrible behavior. Um, what we are to be is compassionate and we are to be empathetic. We are try to understand what they're going through. We are to lift them up during this trial. We are to be there, to be there for them to talk to, to be there for, to pray with. We, we are to be there and we are to treat them with love. Okay. Um, in the next verses, we're going to be looking at verses 15 through 17. And it says, For the day of the Lord is near against all the nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. What you deserve will return on your own head. As you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and gulp down and be as though they had never been. But there will be a deliverance on Mount Zion, and it will be holy. The house of Jacob will dispossess those who dispossess them. Okay, then the Lord goes on to explain that we all will be judged by him. Um, Proverbs 31, 8 through 9 says, Speak up for those who have no voice. Judge righteously and defend the cause of the oppressed and the needy. Then he goes to this descriptive verse about the cup of judgment. And I'm thinking, um, because the Israelites had neglected God and had turned away from him, he was pouring their judgment on them at the time that the Babylonians attacked and allowed them to be captured. Now, I have this mental picture in my mind of him pouring out the judgment and then the Edomites come over from next door and they start filling up their cups with God's judgment and then they start pouring it out on Israel too. And, and helps to distribute the judgment that God meant for Israel. And then God says, because you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations will drink continually. They will drink and gulp down as though they have never been. So because the Edomites had, you know, tried to share in that, in that judgment, God is eventually going to pour the cup of judgment out on the Edomites. And they are, it's going to be, so fast and so furious that they will they will drink and they will gulp and they it it's all they can do to get it down. Um, so then it goes on to say that you know, but there will be deliverance on Mount Zion, and it will be holy. The house of Jacob will dispossess those who dispossess them. Okay, so literally Israel will return to Jerusalem and build back up the temple and they will no longer be oppressed. That is coming. We know that. Um, another way to look at that deliverance is, you know, Jesus will come in the New Testament and deliver us from our sin. We'll defeat death and Satan and we will all be delivered. And then the third way that you can look at that deliverance is you know, Jesus will return to Jerusalem in the second coming to establish his kingdom and to reign in peace. So, um, 
I want you to think about one of the activities in our Sunday school lesson was, it says to don't hoard your blessings. Um, actually, I want to tell you this little story first. We were watching this comedian on TV last night and he was at this church in Tennessee. It was a big crowd and he was, he was, he was a comedian, but he was also talking about God and, and blessing people and, and helping people through trials and tribulations. And and he was talking about this. He said he was at a show and he said the Lord just kept telling him that he needed to speak to this lady on the front row, but she was deaf. There was a translator there and and he really didn't know how to talk to her. So... He got the translator to ask her to come up on stage, and she did, and he asked her what her greatest need was. And the translator asked her, and she says, I'm, I don't have a need. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really good. And he said, no, what's your greatest need? He said, and she signed that her, her and her husband had not been able to take a vacation for like 14 years. And he thought to himself, okay, well, I can, I can pay for you a weekend getaway and, and that'll be, you know, that'll be a, a blessing to her and I can take care of that need. He said, but then I asked a different question. He asked, why haven't you been able to take a vacation? And she signed that she had a special needs child at home and she couldn't find anybody to stay with them, with him so that they could go away for the weekend. And so he immediately turned to the crowd and said, where in this building is a special needs nurse? And there was silence. He said, where in this building is a special needs nurse? And he said, and then I hear this little voice in the balcony and she says, here I am. And so he was able to make that connection so that the special needs nurse who is qualified to watch her son and they could feel comfortable leaving and going away for the weekend instead of just paying for them a weekend trip away. He was able to connect two people that that could help each other. And I think this is what. The Lord is trying to tell us we all have something to offer. Um, so I want you to think about some ways that you have been blessed that you could pay it forward in, in a way. You know, are, are you blessed with free time or, or money or a social network or food? Do you have an abundance of food or clothing? Or maybe you have a good business sense that somebody needs help with. Maybe creative talents or housing, family or church. Think about these things and think about how God has blessed you and how you can use your blessings to bless someone else. So this week, um, we are going to move from self-preservation to sacrifice. I want you to identify one area in your life where you are operating out of self-preservation instead of seeking the kingdom first. Assess how you spend your time, your talent, and your treasure and choose one area to implement a change so that you are seeking God's kingdom first and living sacrificially. Next, we're going to move from indifference to empathy. Mm, this is a big one, guys. Take some time to journal and write out responses to the following questions. How do I struggle with indifference? <clears throat> How have I been passively disobedient? In what areas of my life do I live out of self-preservation instead of sacrificial service? Now, guys, we have a great ministry at our church called Celebrate Recovery. And a lot of people do not support that ministry because they are not an addict. They don't understand 
that sin is an addiction. They don't understand that everybody, everybody could benefit from coming to CR. They assume that it is just a place like AA where, where alcoholics and drug users can come and, and recover. That's not what it's about. Um, so we need to, to work on our indifference towards that ministry and have more empathy for the people that come and to seek God in, on those Sunday nights. The last thing we're going to do is move from passivity to action. Somewhere in your community, there is disparity. Identify one tangible area of injustice and bring two others alongside you to formulate a plan to fight for justice in that area. Make sure to bring others along who are different from you and can offer other ex perspectives on how to engage. And guys, I really, um, I know we're probably going to have some bad weather this morning, so that's why I'm doing this lesson. I really want you to pray about this this week because um, Celebrate Recovery is such a good program. Um, there's good food. First of all, there's good food. So that's a plus. Um, you get to meet people. You get to see them in their struggles. And you, you get to take your mind off of what you're going through and, and, and put your focus on someone else that needs help. And the Lord, the Lord has given you everything in your life, every trial that you've overcome, every, every fear that you've faced, he, he puts you through that so that you could use that experience and help someone else. And this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, it's a good hour of, of praise and worship. It, it's just good fellowship. And I, I pray that everybody will start coming to celebrate recovery. Um, I will see y'all in the 11 o'clock service. That's the only service we're having today. And um, I can't wait to be back with you next week.